welcome to my second quick tip video for Sony Alpha landscape shooters. This tip is covering focus settings, both autofocus and manual focus settings. Also, the first episode of my more comprehensive Sony Alpha landscape series is now live on YouTube. So if you wanna see me answer the question, which Sony Alpha cameras can give you great landscape results and which cameras are best suited for landscape results, check out the link right here. Okay, so there's no time to mess around in these quick tip videos. This one is about focus settings and functions, both autofocus and manual focus, but specifically for Sony Alpha landscape shooters. One quick note, this video is about how to use certain settings to nail your critical focus point. But there's a related and equally as important concept called depth of field which is how far your focus extends away from that critical focus point. I'm not gonna specifically cover depth of field in this video, but I will be doing a deep dive into focus and depth of field as part of my Sony Alpha landscape series. So if you're keen to learn more, consider hitting the subscribe button because that video will be coming out in a few weeks time. Okay, so here are the settings and functions that you need to be aware of if you wanna nail your focus for landscape photography. The starting point is to check what focus mode you are in. Sony has a bunch of different autofocus modes and they each have their place, but for landscape photography, my recommendation is to stick with single shot autofocus or AFS or manual focus, MF. Most lenses these days have an autofocus manual focus toggle switch built onto the lens and this can be handy in a pinch, but it doesn't give you access to some of the other focus modes. So I generally don't recommend you get into the habit of only using the toggle switch on the lens. For this reason, I also recommend that you put your autofocus mode onto some kind of custom button on your camera. By default, most of the A7 series cameras have focus mode mapped to custom button C3 on the back of the camera. And if that's the case for you, I'd recommend that you leave it there. On some of the smaller bodies, such as the A6000 series or the new A7C, where you don't have quite as many custom buttons, I'd also recommend that you put your focus mode into the function menu for quick access. So for landscape photography, I recommend that you stay in AFS. While Sony's continuous autofocus modes, AFC, are amazing for certain types of photography, particularly when you need to track moving objects, it's really not necessary for landscape photography to be reacquiring focus continuously, and it can, in some circumstances, slow you down. For focus area, I generally recommend you stick with a medium-sized flexible spot. That way you can move the autofocus area on top of the key subject that you need to be in critical focus. Wider areas leave a little bit too much for chance for my liking, as the camera will decide for you where the autofocus is gonna go. And the small autofocus point can be just a little bit too precise, particularly if you're focusing on an area that's in shadow. On all the recent A7 and A9 cameras, you can move your autofocus point around using the joystick, using the directional pad buttons, or using the touchscreen. On the Sony cameras without a joystick, such as the A6000 lineup and the new A7C, you can still move your focus points around using the directional pad, but you'll need to find the setting called focus standard and assign it to a custom button. I've currently got it assigned to the center button on the A7C, so I can press that and then have access to the D-pad to move my autofocus points around. One thing to note on using the touchscreen, on the absolute newest cameras, there's also the option to touch to track which will enable Sony's real-time tracking on the area where you press your finger. You do have the option in the menu to toggle between touch to track and touch to move your autofocus point. So let's move on to talk about manual focus, which is my preferred way of focusing my landscape images. When you look through the focus modes on Sony Alpha cameras, you'll see both DMF or direct manual focus and MF manual focus. Manual focus works as you'd expect by turning your focus ring, you have full control over the focus distance. When you're in DMF mode, when you half press the shutter down, the camera will acquire focus using autofocus. And then so long as you're still half pressing the shutter, you will be able to manual focus from that position. You're usually not able to do that in autofocus modes. While DMF certainly has its uses in other genres of photography, like macro photography, I don't find it particularly useful for landscape photography. Two functions that I do recommend you use when manual focusing are focus assist, sometimes called MF assist, depending on what menus you're using, and the focus magnifier. These two features work in essentially the same way. They both enable you to digitally zoom into the image before you take the shot and enable you to be really precise with your manual focusing. I personally prefer to use the focus magnifier assigned to a custom key on my camera to focus my landscape images. 
The reason for this is you don't always get a good idea of where focus assist is gonna zoom into before it zooms in. And it will also zoom in any time you touch the focus ring. And I find this to be just a little bit annoying. Focus magnifier on the other hand, when assigned to a custom button, will only trigger when you press the custom button and before it zooms in, will give you a nice window so that you can select exactly where you're gonna zoom into. With both features, you can move the window around using either the joystick or the D-pad, but with the focus magnifier, you have the added benefit of being able to use the touch screen to position your window before you zoom in. Depending on what camera model you have, you'll get about 12 times digital zoom. And at this level of magnification, I find it really easy to nail my manual focus. If you're still finding it difficult to manual focus, maybe your eyesight isn't so great or the screen you're using is a bit older and the resolution isn't so good, there are some other really useful features which will help you with your manual focus, namely focus peaking. Focus peaking works by showing an outline around the things in the image which the camera thinks are in focus. And you can select from a few different colors and a few different threshold levels, which sets how in focus something needs to be in order for the peaking to identify it. Focus peaking is not a setting that I generally have on for landscape photography. We're usually working with a really deep depth of field. So when you turn the focus peaking on, everything lights up in your selected color. When I do turn it on, it's usually in the most challenging of situations or when I'm working with shallow depth of field. And in those situations, I've usually got it set to high and the color set to red because I really wanna see the peaking. So that's pretty much it for this quick tip. If you do really wanna step up your landscape game, I would recommend exploring manual focus and those manual focus assist features which I spoke about. Once you get really comfortable with these settings and really comfortable with depth of field, you'll end up finding that manual focus is about as quick as autofocus and actually more reliable in challenging lighting conditions, super long exposures using really dark NDs, time lapses or changing lighting conditions. I don't wanna undersell how amazing the latest Sony cameras are at focusing in low light, but there comes a point where manual focus will be better. All right, that's about it for this quick tip. If you like this video, maybe hit the like button. If you wanna see some earlier videos in this series, they'll be linked in the description down below. And if you wanna see more from me, in particular, my upcoming video on depth of field, consider hitting the subscribe button. There's lots more to come. Thanks so much for watching.